What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com checking out a brand new add-on built on top of geometry nodes that adds a lot of different functions to Blender. Super excited about this one specifically for more of an architectural focus. There's a lot of stuff in here though so let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right so this add-on is called Bag of Pie. And basically what it is, is it's an add-on that adds different modifier and geometry node tools inside of Blender. So most of it's built on top of geometry nodes, which is super, super cool. Um, you can also download this for free from the author's Gunroad page. So the author goes by Baga. Um, he actually has a YouTube channel. Um, his actual name is Antoine Bagatini, and I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. But um, he's made this modifier available for free. So you can download this from his Gumroad page. I do recommend if you want to support developers like this, please make some kind of a donation here to kind of support what he's doing. So there's also a great video on that page that gives you kind of an idea of what this whole thing is capable of. So you can watch that if you're interested in checking it out. You can see how there's some really cool stuff in here. Um, but when you download this, what we're going to do is we're just going to jump over into Blender. We're just going to edit preferences. You just want to make sure that you install the zip file that comes along with it. And then you just want to check the box for the bag of pie modifier. And notice how it tells you right here that you access all of the tools by tapping the J key. So let's take a look at some of the tools that are in here. And I'm kind of going to start with the architectural ones just because that's uh, kind of my focus. And then we can talk about some of the others as well. But there's a lot to unpack in here. So first off, let's do a shift A and let's just add a plane. I'm just going to move the plane over. And then I'm just going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to delete only the face. And so my goal here is I want to keep the perimeter right here. So one of the first tools I want to look at is there's a tool in here. If you tap the J key for creating a wall. And so when you create a wall, what that's going to do is that's going to take um, and the edges of an object or curves and it's going to create a wall just like this. And so notice what that's going to do is that's going to give you the ability to set the height of the wall as well as the depth or thickness of the wall right here. And so one of the cool things about this is let's say that we were to tab back into object mode, select this edge like this. Well, notice how because this is in here kind of as a uh, geometry node, we're going to be able to actually edit this in here as well just by adjusting those lines. So let's say I was to select the edge right here, move it this way. Notice how the wall is going to adjust with us. So we could also come in here and add like a, a loop and then extrude across here like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to toggle snapping on. But notice how I could extrude that vertex in order to quickly add walls in here. So just the wall adding functionality is going to be really cool. So one of the cool things about this is if you click on the Bag of Pie menu, which you can access by tapping the N key and uh, popping this menu up, you can come back and make adjustments to this later. So I can adjust my wall thickness, I can adjust the axis offset, other things like that. And so that's going to allow us to create a wall. Well then, we could come in here and we could tap the J key again and we could add like a window. And so we could come in here, we could draw this window. So we're just going to draw and then we're going to move our mouse and click on the back right here. So basically what we're doing is we're just like cutting a hole in this face. So I can just move my mouse right here. Well then this actually generates a window on the wall right here. So you can use this to quickly add windows to your models. So if you were to click on the button for more window, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to add another window over here. And you do want to make sure that when you do this, that you're giving it the thickness of the wall. And again, I find the snapping to be really helpful in here to make sure that I'm snapping this to the back side of the wall. But this is a great tool for creating things like windows. And so in addition, you could also use the Boolean function um, to add openings in this wall. So for example, if I was to select this, and then tap the J key, there's a Boolean function in here and notice how it's going to put this right on this face, but you could use this in order to quickly add like a door opening or something like that. So again, we just use the same snapping that we used before. You can see how this makes adding Booleans really easy as well. Then we can just click on exit right here, but notice how creating this, uh, creating this wall 
is really easy. All right, so in addition, something I really like about this add-on is the array functions that are contained inside of it, um, specifically one in particular. But let's go ahead and let's bring down a model from Sketchfab. So this is the power transmission line by Combine Soldier. And so we're just gonna bring this in. Uh, we'll place it right here. I'm probably gonna delete out this plane. We'll select the rest of this and do a control J to join it. And we'll just scale this down. And we'll make sure to apply our rotation and scale. But let's say that we wanted to create an array, right? So you can tap in here, you can tap the J key, you can create an array um, with as many objects as you'd like in here. You can adjust the offset, you can adjust if it has a left or right, a lot of the same kind of functions that you have with the array modifier. Um, but you do have some cool things in here like, for example, let's go back into Bag of Pie. So first off, this allows you to do randomization of scale, so minimum and maximum like this, as well as randomization of rotation. So the randomization of rotation can be really helpful for things like trees and other things like that. You can obviously adjust the seed that's in here as well. So there's different kinds of arrays that you can create. So for example, you can also create a grid. So the grid is gonna be exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to create a certain number along an X and Y, and then adjust the offset in there. That gives the options over here, but there's also my favorite one in here, which is the array along a curve. So what I like about this one, or along a circle, what I like, about this one is you can create an array along a circle without having to come in here and mess with curves or other things like that and fitting something to a fitting something to a length. And what I like about that is it means you don't have to come in here and mess around with creating a curve and then fitting this to curve and all of that. You can just take this and you can literally create the create the copies along a circle no problem at all. So you can also adjust the different alignments in here as well as the position. One of the fun things about this is you can also kind of randomize that position up and down, left and right. What I like about that is it means you're not limited to just like a simple curve like this, but you can also have some fun with that as well. So I really like the array functions that are contained inside of this tool. And so one of the cool things about this is if we jump over and I've got a geometry nodes view and we look at this, this is actually built on the geometry nodes. So what that's doing is that's actually creating your geometry nodes over here. Well, what that does is that gives you the ability to actually come in here and make adjustments to the way that it works if you decide that you want to do that. Um, so it is going to require a little bit of knowledge about geometry nodes in order to make that happen. But um, this being built on geometry nodes means that there's going to be a lot more flexibility in the future. All right. So in addition, it also contains tools for scattering and scatter painting. So you can use this to scatter things on a face inside of your model. So what we're going to do is first off, we're going to use this uh, low poly asset collection, collection, the little nature pack by DFS studio from Sketchfab. So you can download that and follow along. All right. And so what this is going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to select some objects by doing a shift click and then selecting this object to last and just tapping the J key and clicking the button for scatter. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna come scatter these objects on your surface. Notice how you get a menu over here where you can adjust things like your density as well as your position on the face. You can also randomize your position, you can randomize your rotation, other things like that as well. So this gives you full control over the randomization that's in here. So for example, we could set the randomization of our scale little bit in order to really add some random stuff in here. So in addition to being able to scatter things like plants um, just on a surface, there's also a tool in here. If you tap J again, so in addition, you could also select this object, then do a shift click and select the face. You tap J and you can click on scatter paint. And it's gonna to ask to preserve performance, hide the scatter modifier. I'm actually gonna say okay. But what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow you to paint in where you want copies of an object. So you can use this in order to quickly place objects on a surface, just like this. And we can jump back into object mode 
and see this. And so then to turn this back on, all you have to do is go back into your modifiers over here. Just click on this button right here in order to toggle that back on. So it's also got a couple tools that basically give you access to, or quick access to some modifiers. So they're not necessarily based on geometry modes, nodes, but they allow you to do some cool stuff. Like for example, let's say I was to add just a simple curve in here and we're just going to edit the curve. So we'll move this, extrude this out, just a simple curve like this. Well, what we've got is we've got an option where we can select this object, do a shift click to select this one, and then tap that J key and click on auto array along curve. So first thing is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's uh, using the right direction. So in this case, we want the X direction, but notice how this is gonna automatically create that array on the curve. And so previously what we had to do is, it wasn't super hard to do this, but you'd have to come in here and add an array and then a curve modifier over here. This just does this automatically. The cool thing about this is now, this is gonna automatically adjust things like the length of your chain by arraying that object along the curve, assuming that you've set it up properly. So um, this can really make that process a lot faster. So there's also a function in here to quickly add displacement. So if you tap that J key with this active, um, the displace function is gonna allow you to add displacement to this object. And so this is basically um, very similar to adding a displacement modifier over here. It's just, it puts the tools in kind of the same place and makes it a little bit easier to use. So for example, now I could like keyframe this and adjust it, keyframe it again by tapping the I key. And over here, bring it back down. We could keyframe this as well. So there's a lot of things you can do with the displacement modifier, but this gives you the ability to access those things really quickly inside of your window right here. So specifically for this add-on, what I really like is the architectural functions, like the walls and the quick booleans and things like that. This could be a great architectural modeling tool for Blender, but leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about it. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.